Hello Elizabeth, it's wonderful to have you with us this afternoon. Uh, we're very excited to have this opportunity to speak with you and ask you a few questions about your book, The Sixth Extinction, which as we know was the um, assigned reading for the class of 2018 here at Lafayette College. So in your book, um, The Sixth Extinction, we read that by the end of the century, 20 to 50 percent of all species on Earth could be on their way to extinction. What possible implications does that have for the human race? Well, the, the kind of honest answer there um, is that we don't know. One, one, one of the points of the book is that it, we are seem to be in one of those rare moments in you know the history of, of the planet of, of 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 what's known as a mass extinction, and in this particular case, we are. We are the agents of that extinction. And one of the points that scientists make when they talk about mass extinction is that what seems to happen when we look back at the past, at the mass extinctions of the past, which have a sort of diversity of causes, um, is that the rules of the game change. Uh, it seems that so, for example, to take a very well-known example, the last mass extinction was about 66 million years ago and the dinosaurs died off. and. You know, people, we, we use the word dinosaur to refer to something that's obsolete, and, and we think of dinosaurs as, you know, they were sort of not too bright and sort of, you know, shuffled off. But dinosaurs were the dominant creature, uh, a whole group of creatures uh, on Earth for many tens of millions of years, a lot longer than people have been around. Um, so when the rules change, um, you really don't know what you're going to, you know, get. And so... Uh, I think that the implications, obviously, of being at a time uh, of, of extinction are, you know, they're, they're, they're not good. They're generally not good. They're obviously not good for all of those species that are on their way toward extinction. And if you want to say, you know, what are they for us, you would, you would probably also have to infer uh, that they're not too good. But what exactly they are, you know, are, are, are impossible to predict. And I understand that you have three sons, is it? Yes. Okay, so with that in mind, what are your greatest concerns regarding the changes that the next generation will face if we continue on our current path? Well, I think one really um, huge concern that I have and that many, you know, it's, a, it's not an original point, and I, I really also want to emphasize that the points in the book, uh, in, in, in virtually every chapter, you know, I'm, I'm out there with, with a group of scientists, at, often out in the field, people doing field work. Um, so in many cases, these are not my points. They're points that were, were made to me by, you know, pretty eminent scientists. And a point that you will very, very often hear scientists make is, um, you know, what they're, what they're really worried about in addition to what's happening to all the other creatures on the planet, which, um, you know, have their own value, their own intrinsic value, I would argue, and certainly they would argue that uh, people are out there studying amphibians and birds and... Uh, insects and you know that they have their own right to exist um, but you know we are not birds or insects um, we are people and I think that one thing that really scares a lot of scientists and scares me um, is that society uh, you know we, we, we sort of think that society can withstand uh, a lot of change but societies are actually quite fragile we, we've seen that in the past and I think if you look at climate change and the projections for the you know, mid to end of the century, uh, you get very concerned about what the social reaction is going to be. You know, how are we going to cope uh, with some of these changes that we're going to see? Uh, is there going to be, uh, you know, a lot of um, global tensions over, you know, things as simple as, as water and food? Uh, so I guess if you ask me, you know, sort of what do I worry about for my kids, um, that's a biggie. Absolutely. And as a result of everything that you've experienced and everything that you've learned, uh, what changes have you made in your own life, kind of as a result of your work? Well, I, I, you know, if you look at sort of, you know, the, the, the checklist of things that people advocate doing to, you know, reduce your carbon footprint, I have done them. Um, you know, I have solar panels on my roof that really do provide actually all of our electricity, sort of I'm a net electricity provider and things like that, and I drive a hybrid car. But I really emphasize whenever people ask me that, you know, I came here, I traveled here, I flew on a plane, and that 
uh, probably knocked out, you know, the benefit. I'd have to do the math on it, but of having solar panels really maybe for half a year or something like that. So I, I never hold myself out. I never say like, oh, if people live like me, we would solve this problem because if you do know the numbers, which unfortunately I do, uh, you know that, um, you know, we here in the U.S. Uh, are living way, way, you know, very carbon intensive lives. Even just our sh your share, if you just took, you know, the infrastructure that you're using, the electrical grid or whatever, you took your share of that, uh, it would be a very, very high number. Um, so, you know, w when I, I don't hold myself up, I don't say, oh, you know, th this is what we should do. I, that being said, I, I do think that all of the steps that, you know, people know that they should do, do or they've been told a million times, uh, are, 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 are worth taking, worth trying. So I know when we look at these collective issues such as um, anthropogenic or human-created um, climate change or loss of biodiversity, there's kind of a diffusion of responsibility um, where people feel like those steps that you mentioned, if I take these steps, you know, will anything really change? I'm, I'm only a small part of this bigger problem. So what advice would you give to individual Lafayette College students uh, regarding how they could best act to combat the, the damage we're inflicting on our planet? Well, I, I do think that, that the point that you make, you know, that people, people feel powerless, it becomes a, a situation where everyone's responsible and sort of, so therefore no one, you know, has to take mm -hmm. responsibility. Um, and, and that's true and that's very debilitating, but um, I guess the way I try to look at it, you know, once again, this is a personal, you know, these are personal decisions, unfortunately. I mean, what we need are sort of big political decisions, but on a personal level, I think people need to do, you know, what they think is right. And, you know, we wouldn't say in terms of, you know, ordinary everyday ethics, well, I, I'm not sure that that guy over there, you know, isn't, isn't cheating. I'm not sure he's not, you know, uh, cheating on his taxes or or whatever, so therefore, you know, I'm going to do it too. I mean, a certain number of people are going to say that, but you know, we all do sort of everyday ethical things, and and I think that that is the same thing here. It's not ne it's not going to change the world, but on the other hand, universalized, there are actions that if we all took them, universalized, they would actually make a pretty significant difference. Um, and I think that that even though you know that by you're doing them, you know, by your riding your bike as opposed to driving your car. That is not changing the world. But if everyone rode their bike uh, instead of driving their car, that would have a that would have a big impact. And so, uh, those kinds of actions, I think, are worth taking, both just because they're the right thing to do, and also because they set an example that, if followed um, by enough people, actually would have a practical impact. All right. Well, I'd like to just thank you again for coming and sharing your experiences and your insights with us. We're very grateful for this learning opportunity and having the chance to speak to you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.